right. Well, welcome to Expedition Church of the Triad. We are glad to have you with us tonight, and I am going to um, get where I can share whenever it shows up online, and um, I have to turn, turn all my stuff down or it'll blast us out and everybody will laugh at me again. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> right. Okay. All righty. Praise the Lord. Um, I can't share. It didn't show up again. It's, it's got this new thing. It just goes, it decides when it's going to tell me that we went live on its own terms, which are not usually my terms. Okay. So I'm like, can you please... Um, Go, yes. Oh, yeah. There we go. That's awesome. I like it. I love it. Hallelujah. All right. Midweek service. All right. I got it up there. I'm going to hit uh, share. Glory to God. Dick Schubert. And hey, Linda. High school buddy. Hallelujah. Um, I'm trying to get this shared out there. All right. One of my high school classmates just came on. All righty. Welcome uh, to Wednesday night uh, Bible study. And we're glad to have you with us. All y'all here in the building, all those that are coming, still coming in and those that have joined us online. Bless you for being with us and uh, hope you are a minister too. A uh, couple announcements. Don't forget Sunday mornings, Wednesday nights, Tuesday night Zoom prayer meeting. Also, if you miss a service, they are on the website expeditiontriad.org. Um, you can go there, or if you want to watch them on your phone, you can go to Facebook and watch them on the Facebook um, page, which is Expedition Church of the Triad. I, I think it's Expedition Church Facebook page. Triad. Expedition Triad is the, is the Facebook page. Okay, it's out there. Uh, let y'all know we have updated uh, our online giving. It is no longer using the former church name. There's, it's, it's all uh, gone. Uh, um, the cash app is dollar sign expedition triad, uh, lowercase letters for all that. And then PayPal is give at expedition triad.org, all lowercase letters. Okay. Um, so just let you know, we are updated and you don't have to go. Well, we're using the old church name for our cash app. It's a, oh, it is all lowercase. Yep. Sorry. I just. Okay. Well, I, we put it in as all lowercase. So, if it if it if it did it, change it on its own. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. He'll fix that. He's so excited. He goes, "I got it. I got it." <laughs> I love brother. He's trying to get it. Yep. Trying so hard. And I just noticed it right then. All right. We have been sharing on Wednesday nights about uh, confession, the power of our confession. Now we're not. You know, when we talk about confession in the Bible, there is. Um, different types of confession. Now, one is confession of sin, and that's not really what we're talking about. That is the acknowledgement of sin, etc. We're talking about the confession of faith, okay, the profession of your faith. Same Greek word, profession or confession, the King James Bible uh, is translated for the same Greek word, meaning basically the same thing. You're confessing, you're professing um, a, a statement of faith. And so we have spent uh, several Wednesday nights uh, on that vein, on that line. And um, I want to, because we, we have majored on in that, uh, as last week as we were kind of uh, tying up those, those ends of what we were sharing, on the importance of getting your information from the right source. Amen? You know, because so, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Faith does not come um, by wishing and hoping so. Faith doesn't come from your friends' uh, ideas, okay, or what they think, their, their, their opinion or their thoughts about something. Faith comes, according to Romans chapter 10, verse 17, by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, okay? And so we, have to, we, we major on the Word of God. We use Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein. And then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Okay? Now, we know that at that time, the book of the law with the Pentateuch, the five books of Moses, it was the only word of God they had, but, uh, except for Job. Job actually is the oldest book in the Bible. 
Job was written before anything else was written. <clears throat> so chronologically, Job is the oldest. But they, they looked at the Pentateuch, the word, that was the word of God. So it's, it's not a, um, not being liberal with the scriptures to say that, that say this book, the word of God should not depart out of your mouth. Okay. Because that was the word of God in their day. That's what they had as the word of God. They didn't have, they didn't have the Psalms. They didn't have the book of judges. They didn't have first, second Samuel. They didn't have all the, pro <clears throat> all the prophets. They had the five books of Moses. Okay. And so when he gets to Joshua and Joshua is about to go into the land, God tells him. This book of the law, the five books, the, the Pentateuch, the five books of Moses uh, shall stay in your mouth. Well, we're New Testament believers now. And we have the whole canon of Old Testament and even now the whole canon of New Testament. And so it's the, the word of God shall stay in your mouth. Okay. And so we, we major on the importance of the word of God being involved in our confession. Because if you're going to have a good confession, it needs to be a biblical confession. Okay? You can't confess somebody else's spouse is yours. That is not a confession. That is lust. Okay? That is sinful. All right? You can't confess my car into your hands. Why? It's my car. I will never forget Brother Hagen uh, coming uh, back on Christmas, uh, when, I, when I was out there, he came back for Christmas. And he said, you know, the other day, one of the Raymond students stopped me walking across the campus. <laughs> like, oh, boy. I mean, we had, some, we had some doozies back in the day, you know. I mean, we had some <laughs> granola Christians, fruits, nuts, and flakes all packaged together in the same box. Yeah. <laughs> and I went to school with a couple of them that we went out there together. We showed up in an old telephone van with shoe polish all over it, Rama or bust. I mean, you know, I mean, rolling across the front, written in backward letters so you can read it in your rearview mirror, God Squad. <laughs> we got out there and we we're going to, you know, the, the church wanted us to send a letter back, let them know we got all there, got all settled. They get out a calligraphy pen and write in old English like letters in calligraphy. To the church at Greenville. <laughs> we being whatever, however. <laughs> Signed the church in Tulsa. <laughs> I mean, Rod Sterling was in the room. All right. Hallelujah. The Twilight Zone. Okay. Praise the Lord. So anyway, um, we, we need to major on what the Word says about things. Okay, really need to be on that. So I want to talk to you tonight about keeping the word or how to keep the word because it's got to stay before you. It's got to stay. It's got to be forefront in your life. It's got to be important as to what you're doing. Amen. Hallelujah. So go with me, if you will, to the 119th Psalm. Psalm 119. We will go to verse 17 of the 119th Psalm. I saw something really interesting the other day, and it talked about how much Paul quoted the Old Testament in his writings. And it was kind of a, um, I don't want to say a dig, it was a dig at all those who say we just need the New Testament. In other words, the new is the governing factor over the old. So we, we quoted the, during this teaching how that uh, the Old Testament says, who shall ascend, in, ascend and that we may bring him down and who shall go into the depths and bring him up, you know, and it goes on and says that, you know, uh, but what is it? The word is neither even in the mouth and in thy heart. Paul takes that very passage, I mean, verbatim, and then goes, 
That is the word of faith which we preach. So he takes an Old Testament passage and then says, and here's what it means. This word is the word of faith which we preach. So now you can't go back to the old and do away with that word of faith part. Does that make sense? Because he, in New Testament revelation, it's saying that the Old Testament writer in concealing it was referring to something that was coming called the word of faith. That to preach, you know, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth, and with the mouth confession is made. Does that make sense? So it's, that's, the, it's, that's what, it's that way all throughout the New Testament, Old Testament and New Testament. So remember, as we, we're, we're going, we're not going through progressive. People want to call us a progressive revelation. It's not a, you know, the word about God's not progressing. There's no new word of God being done. Okay. You don't get a living prophet who makes something and changes the entire Bible because he's got a new revelation. No, the word of the spirit agree. And even New Testament doctrine agrees with Old Testament basis, but in a, in, in, in a revealed state. Now, there were some things in the law Jesus changed. You know, you, it's, you, you've heard that it said, uh, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto thee, love thy neighbor. Do good to them that despitefully use you. So what's he doing? He gives a superseding law over the Old Testament law. Now, where he did not do that, that's still in force. Well, Jesus didn't say anything about this particular type of sin. He didn't have to. He didn't change everything. In the, he said, I didn't. He said, you think I came to do away with the law? I came to fulfill the law. Amen. And so we, we need to get a little more mature. And I'm not talking to you individually, you know, but I'm talking in the body of Christ, especially in the charismatic word of faith circles. We need to get more, more mature about how we address these things and not get caught up in our little narratives where we get so narrow about something that we can't allow, you know, well, <laughs> we're under grace. We don't need uh, God. None of that matters anymore. Well, <sighs> Jesus Again, said I didn't come to do away with it. I came to fulfill it. Now, he gave a superseding law over commandments of thou shalt not to walk in love. Why? Because if you're walking in love, thou shalt not. <laughs> or thou won't do. <laughs> okay? Thou won't do. <laughs> How about that? Was that good? Is that good King Jimmy sounding? Thou won't do. <laughs> Find out if that's a real word, Bill. Won't. It's King James. Okay. <laughs> Did you look? No, he just went, no, it's not a, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> he, he's just deferring out of that. All right. <clears throat> Amen. And so uh, it's still wrong to do things. Okay. He didn't say it was right to do it just because he gave it the law of love. He didn't undo the wrongness of something because he gave the law of love. Just because he didn't address it when he was teaching doesn't mean it's okay to go do it now. He's not going to sit there and requote the entire Old Testament and go. Now, to make sure you understand, in the New Testament, it is still wrong to use the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Did Jesus say that anywhere in the New Testament that thou shalt not use the name of the Lord thy God in vain? In any of the Gospels, did Jesus say that? No. It's still wrong. Hello? Do you understand what I'm trying to, the point I'm trying to make? And so we, we, um, we do walk in a higher place, walk in a different revelation. <coughs> what governs us is not living under these laws to achieve righteousness, but because we've been declared righteous and born again, life of God's in us, we now live under the um, authority of a higher law, the law of love, which will fulfill the commandments of the thou shalt nots and this so forth and so on. Because you're walking in love. You're not going to covet thy neighbor's wife if you walk in love towards your neighbor. That's real simple. You will not take innocent life. And now just, you know, just so everybody knows, 
all the, the crazies who protest for abortion go and protest against the death penalty. Now, that just tells you what devil's in charge of that one. Somebody's been a mass murderer. Oh, you can't take life. And they come right over here and scream because you want to stop a woman from choosing to do what she wants to do with her body. Okay. Well, the Bible says it, the word murder in the Hebrew literally means innocent life. Thou shalt not take innocent life. Okay. Because God, the New Testament says that the, that, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit. Basically, <coughs> the governing officers carry the sword not in vain. Okay? All right. So, um, there we are. Okay? Enough, I, want, I just want to make sure that, so we, we can go and take things and look at the Old Testament as long as we're interpreting it in the light of the new then it's valid. Okay? It's still valid. And so don't, don't discount the entire Old Testament. Well, I just got the new. I don't need any of that Old Testament. Well, yes, you do. That's what Paul was quoting all the time. Jesus quoted all the time. Are you here? You're going home. How many are here? Are you, how many out there are here? Raise your hand at home. All right. <clears throat> I'm sorry, the camera's over here. How many are there? You're at home watching? Raise your hand. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hey, man, Ivy, how you doing, buddy? Uh, <laughs> glory to God. N another old high school. Played baseball with Ivy. <laughs> Hallelujah. And um, he was a year behind us, but he hit like 400 the, the year after we graduated. Yeah. Huh? That was nice. Yes, it was. <coughs> now, Psalm 119, verse 17 says, Deal bountifully with thy servant, that I may live, and keep thy word. And so we want to understand, we need to, we need to keep the word of God. The, the Amplified Classic, I hate to even have to do this now, I would say we would change the name of the new Amplified to uh, Semi-Amplified, Not Really Bible. Because it's terrible. I mean, it's like stripped down. Um, deal bountifully with your servant that I may live and listen to this. I will observe your word hearing, receiving, loving, and obeying it. The Amplified Bible deal bountifully with thy servant that I may live and keep your word. Okay. This one says, that's the Amplified, that's a new Amplified right there, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> The Amplified Classic says, I will observe your word, hearing, receiving, loving, and obeying it. So we have four things that are part of keeping the word of God. Okay? Hearing the word, receiving the word, loving the word, and obeying the word. Amen? And so let's look at Romans 10, 17. We've already quoted that earlier tonight in the warm-ups. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, that was, all that other stuff was just warm up. All right. We want, you know, it's Wednesday night hour of power. We try to keep it. We try to keep it to an hour. Uh, now, if, if the Lord leads me different, I will fill up both sides of a 90 minute cassette tape for all you old timers out there. Okay. Romans chapter 10, looking down. Um, we'll just look around verse 11. How about that? For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For what, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now again, saved is sozo in the Greek. It carries a higher or a larger implication than simply being born again. It, it, carries, it contains the idea of salvation, of healing, of may, being made whole, of restoration, of deliverance from temporal evils. Okay? That, that word being the lead word of the sozo word group, of which soterius, the noun, is a part of. Okay? Sozo is the Greek, is the Greek verb. Um, it says here, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him of whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Well, we don't need any preachers. Yeah, we, we get along with God. We just need. There are some people out there that need to be slapped, 
Now, I got some old country folk here with me tonight because they're from down east, and they probably uh, worked in tobacco barns, beat, beat with a tobacco stick. Now, that's a nice about one by one piece of oak, hard, dry kiln from numerous years in the tobacco barn, hard as a brick. Okay? Uh, how, how shall they preach except they be sent? Okay? And as it is written, hallelujah, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah, the Greek form of Isaiah, saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now, if we're going to keep the word, you got to hear it. You got to spend time in the word. And this is where we go back to um, Joshua 1 8. It says in Joshua 1 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, thou shalt have good success. The word meditate, the Hebrew word there that we translate into the English meditate, literally means to mutter. That's to say it, to say it, to repeat it, to speak it to yourself. We've all muttered. Everyone in this room has muttered at some point in time. Some of you were probably muttering on the way to church at a car in front of you. Okay? Or the guy who, who was in two lanes at one time and kept switching back and forth, and you didn't know which way he was going. And you're like, I wish you'd make up your mind. Well, he can't hear you. Well, who are you talking to? You're just talking to yourself. Well, see, you, that's muttering. And all you got to do is take the Bible and do the same thing with it. Talk it to yourself. Speak it to yourself. Okay? So that's one way to hear the words. Of he, or to put on, you know, uh, Bible tape, tapes. They have uh, oh, tapes. <laughs> MP3s or downloads. We don't even now. We just lift the stream. We don't need MP3 anymore. We stream. Okay, <laughs> Hallelujah. We stream, and uh, yeah. But we the the, the media is the media is still out there. I'm I'm so old school. I went and got me a turntable and got some vinyl. It just has this cool ambient sound. Am I right, Dick? Yes. Now the only thing I need right now is an inline tube amp that'll heat up. You know, as the more you play it and the higher you play it, uh, it, it'll heat those tubes up and give it that mud, muddled sound. Uh, anyway, okay. I know y'all. Everybody's been so into digital. It's so crisp, clear, and precise, you know, and accurate. I like the old. Brother Bill, are you there with me? Brother, he's so techy. He likes all the techy stuff. Okay. All right. Anyway, so, you know, uh, get, get you a series on whatever format you want to listen to it from and listen to the Bible. Okay. Hear the word, hear it, hear it over, hear it over and over again. Listen to the word of God, read the word of God, speak it to yourself as you're reading it. Talk out loud. Now I know it may aggravate people around you. Well, I mean, there's, you should have time that you're by yourself, at least, you know, to some degree where you can read, read the word of God and hear yourself reading it out loud. Now, there's a really cool version of the Bible out right now. Darth Vader reads the Bible. James Earl Jones <laughs> reads the Bible. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's the voice of Darth Vader. So I, I could just imagine, you know. <laughs> I mean, you can find, he probably comes in a place in the, in, anywhere that it says, where, and he goes, I am your father. <laughs> <laughs> No, the devil's not your father. I am your father. <laughs> All right. But hear the word of God. You got to spend time in the word because you can't keep the word if you don't know the word. All right. And grandma quoting first opinions 3 7 ain't going to work. Okay. That, that, that's not a biblical passage that you can go to and get faith out of. I've said it before. I'll say it again. When I first got saved, I remember I had, we had digital Bibles and uh, digital concordance. You had to use the strong, exhaustive concordance of the Bible. And I remember uh, somebody asked me where the Lord helps those who help themselves was. 
And I said, I don't know, but I'm going to find it. I spent a week. I finally got desperate and started going through the these. If you've ever had a Strong's, you'll know that they got every reference in the Bible where the word the is. That's why it's called an exhaustive concordance. A, and, or, but, every one of them are listed. Every, now it doesn't have the full scripture or a partial. It just has the reference to it. I, I did them all. And after a week of that, I came back and went, I can't find it. Now, while I was on that search, I was looking for cleanliness is next to godliness. I'm glad the word thee wasn't in that one. Cleanliness is next to godliness. I, I eliminated a couple of the, uh, um, oh, somebody help me with my English now. Um, adjectives, adverbs. Conjunction, thank you. Yeah, I eliminated some of those. It had to spend as much time. And I found, oh man, the revelation that when I found out that they were both in the book of first opinions was liberating. Okay? Because those are just opinions. They're not in the Bible. Okay? Well, you know, everybody's like, man, if I go clean up real good, I'm going to heaven. You no. Know? Hello? Are you here? All right. So in order to keep the word, you got to know the word. All right? You need to be like, a, like the Bereans. The Bible says these were more, uh, the, the, we, they went into Berea and these were more noble than the Christians of Thessalonica in that they received, which we're going to next, the word of God with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily to see whether those things be true or not. And you even have uh, the Assemblies of God has a Berean Bible school. Okay, now don't, don't go over spiritualize that. Um, but that, you know, the point being, you've got to be a student of the word to keep the word. Okay, so you hear the word and then you receive it with all readiness of mind. Hallelujah. A James 1 21. Now I just quoted to you. They received the word of God with all readiness of mind and search the scriptures daily. See, they went back. They would go and hear a sermon. Now, let me say this. Don't you, go, don't you dare try to go to the Lord. Are you here? You need healing. Well, Pastor Ed said healing belongs to me. That ain't good enough. Why? Because faith doesn't come by hearing Pastor Ed. You've got to go search the Bible. You've got to find the scriptures for yourself. You've got to be able to look at that and go, the Word says, by his stripes I was healed. And put that, it's the word in your heart. We can, we can preach, we can give commentary, we can share things around it. But in the end, you are going to have to go take that and prove it out. Now, that's why they said they received it with all readiness of mind. And searched the scriptures. Okay? Did we find that yet? Oh, yeah, we go. Uh, Acts 17, 11. These were more noble than those of Thessalonica in that they received the word of God in all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So Paul would preach something. They would go, oh, that's great. That's awesome. I love it. And then they go take their scriptures out and they start going through it to prove it out. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay, we can point you in the direction. We can share things that, that your heart goes, yeah, that, yes, yes, yes. But then you got to prove it out. Because that's what's going to produce faith in your heart. <coughs> Well, Pastor Ed, well, Brother, Brother Hagin used to tell us, <coughs> excuse me, Brother Hagin used to tell us, um, don't you go out there and tell them Brother Hagin said. You find it for yourself. You find it for you. Hallelujah. Because there, therein lies the secret. You can receive what we teach. You take this sermon and I say, man, that's awesome. And then go home and get your Bible out. And you start looking these scriptures up. And you start proving it out. Why? Because that word's going to produce faith in you. You say, well, I see what he's talking about. I understand what he's saying. Because the word does say this. That's what the Bible says. Yeah, he's right. Yeah. But the reason he's right is because the Bible says it. And then you can go, Lord, you can't, you don't have to go to the Lord then. Go, well, Pastor Ed said, he can go there and say, Lord, your Bible, your word says. Man, Pastor, I was preaching, but I proved it out. And that's right. That's the Bible. Hallelujah. 
Are you, are you here? You're going home. Too often times, and here's why you got to prove it out. Because somebody will get it and preach something that ain't in the Bible. Well, I was listening to so-and-so today, and he said that all my sins are pre-forgiven, and it don't matter what I do. Glory to God, I'm free. What does the Bible say? Well, there's nobody in the Bible that says your sins are pre-forgiven. Hello, that you can do what you want to do. It don't say that either. I mean, we could, we could find out. Um, <clears throat> I remember I had a long Facebook. Lord have mercy. What is this, Aiden Griff tonight? Hey, Jackie. <laughs> I, got, I got Jackie, Linda, and Ivy all here tonight. Well, thank you all for joining. Um, I mean, where was I going with that? Y'all remember? Facebook. Oh, yeah. Years, years ago, when some of this, this extreme grace started coming out, um, I, I had a discussion with somebody on Facebook. And, you know, I said, you know, well, the Bible doesn't say, oh, we're under grace. I said, you know, God, God told people not to sin. You know, I said, um, you know, and then I referred to Adam and Eve. And you know what this person told me? Adam didn't have the Holy Spirit the way we do. Okay, you can't fix stupid here. Adam was created from the dust of the ground, and God took his spirit and put some of it in him. He didn't have the Holy Ghost like we do. Yeah, clone, thank you. I mean, like, but when you create a narrative outside the Word of God because you like what some preacher preached, hello, that you don't go prove out with the Word, and I mean the whole council. You need a well-balanced Scripture diet. You know, the Scriptures you don't know what to do with that seem to contradict the way you're trying to take the other ones. They got a balance in there somewhere. And you just can't disregard the Bible because you found a scripture, I mean, uh, a verse. <laughs> I'm going to come right back to that with this, this, this part, uh, another part of the story. Because it doesn't line up with your narrative. Now, um, we know that the Bible says that um, in James, that James says that there are those who've taken the, the grace of God and turned it into lasciviousness, is the King James word. Um, literally from the Greek means licentiousness. And that, yeah, it, it just ends up at the end of the day meaning wantonness, unbridled, loosed. Okay, turn the grace of God into basically doing whatever you want to do. That, that's, that's the meaning of that word there in James. Turn the grace of God into lasciviousness, licentiousness, wantonness. Now, because that scripture is there, and it so contradicted so much of what extreme grace teaching was teaching about you're pre-forgiven. It doesn't matter what you do. God doesn't care. God only sees. He, he's, he's already pre-forgiven you. You're forgiven. It doesn't matter what you're doing. You, you know, you're, 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 you're covered. It's, okay. it's cool. It's okay. And people say, well, they, people will quote, start quoting James. Now, James says that people have entered in. Wax, uh, he, I forgot how. Hey, how James, what's James? Um, somebody help me here. Is it James or Jude. Jude. Hey, Jude. All right. Yeah, thank you. I, I said James. Jude, Jude 1, verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our Lord into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> they're, they're emissaries of the devil. There are people out there who have big ministries. Not everybody. Not, they don't, I'm not saying everybody preaches grace as this. I'm saying that there is an anointing on people by the devil to turn the grace of God into lasciviousness, lasciviousness, wantonness. Now, um, so people start combating some of this by saying, look, well, James says, I mean, Jews says this. You know what the response became? All Greeks, all, not some, 
All Greek scholars now agree that Jude is not canon. Why? They discount it because it doesn't line up with their narrative. You can't do that. You can't, you got to take the parts you don't get and don't understand or don't like the way that they combat your narrative because your narrative has to be subjected. If you're going to be a keeper of the word, you got to be a keeper of the whole word. Even the parts you don't like. Hello? I mean, even the parts where it says, love thy neighbor. <laughs> Do I have to? Yeah. Yeah, you do. Because the Bible says you have to. Well, I don't like that part. I'm not going to do that part because I don't like that part. I'm saved. Glory to God. I love Jesus. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Woo. Do -do 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 -do. All right, anyway. So we have James 1.21. Now let's get there. Glory to God. He says here, um, For wherefore lay apart all filthiness, <laughs> grace will say you don't have to do that, and superfluity of naughtiness, you don't have to do that, because grace automatically makes you do it. Then why did he tell you to do it? If grace automatically made you do it, then why do you have to do it? Somebody out there, y'all here, y'all go home? Y'all, Well, y'all are home, all right? <laughs> People out there are home, okay? Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of the naughtiness, and receive with meekness, the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Now, let me stop here because this can be confusing if you don't at least have a, a marginal ability to use a concordance or study out in, in, in Greek commentaries and so forth. This, pat, this, this, this phrase right here, save your souls. Okay. Receive with meekness the engrafted word is able to sozo. Now, it's not talking about getting your soul. It's not talking about you getting born again. How do you know? He's talking to Christians. We know that from his opening passage, okay? All right, I mean, James, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. And he, he talks to them. They're believers. He's talking to believers. And he says here that, you're, that he tells them to receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save their soul. Let's go again. The word save here is sozo, which we told you earlier. Um, meaning to save, to heal, to make whole, to deliver, to preserve, make sound your soul. Suke, your soul. Now, the spirit of man is the pneuma. We know from 2 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, where Paul writes and says, I pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body, okay, pneuma, suke, and soma, be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Man is a three-part being. He is spirit. He has a soul. He lives in a body. Okay? Here, the Word of God is not, you're not getting your spirit saved. They're already saved. Now, we do know we're born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, the Word of God, which liveth and abideth forever, according to, to Peter. Okay? Peter says that. So we do get born again through the word, but here he's not talking about being born again. He's talking about the saving or the restoring, or as we talked back up weeks ago, the reprogramming of your mind with the word of God. Yeah, first Peter 1 Peter one twenty three. Okay. So he says here, receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to make sound your soul. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When we look into, um, and I just went blank, and I'm going to get it here in a minute. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, sometimes I come up with stuff that's not in my notes, and then I'm, I'm like, oh, yeah, where is that? Come on, mine. Connect to it, because it's out there. Okay. Hallelujah. Romans 12, verse 1. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable or spiritual service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed 
by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. And so Paul writes in Romans 12, and similar to what, you know, it's, it's carrying some of the same thought or, or, or spiritual implications that James is giving, okay, to receive a meet and see and gratitude where we're able to save your soul or transform your soul. As Paul, Paul says transform, using the Greek metamorpho for metamorphosis, okay, transforms metamorpho, tra metamorphosis. Tadpoles, the butter, the bullfrogs, caterpillars, the butterflies. That's a metamorphosis. That is not a. Um, that's not just a transformation. That is a metamorphosis. That's a complete metamorphosis. All right, complete changing of the state of being. Hallelujah. And the word of God will completely change your state of being. Okay. And when you keep the word, first of all, so what we say, you got to hear it. Second, you got to receive it. <clears throat> you can't reject the word of God because you don't like what it said. When it tells you to do something you don't want to do, it doesn't abdicate you from doing it. You don't receive, I don't receive that. I've heard people say that. You know, I don't receive that. Well, brother, it's the Bible. I don't care if you receive it or not. Now, when somebody comes out and starts prophesying over you and they start prophesying something that you don't, that you don't believe, okay, that's one thing. Hello? Yay. <laughs> you know, and yay, say it the Lord. <clears throat> and I'm not mocking prophets. I believe in prophets. I've prophesied. I've prophesied over people. But it's too easy to put a couple of yeas in there and say, my sons, and, and validate the stupidity that comes out next. Because I've heard some stuff come out, and you're going, oh, Lord. You know? We used to have a lady in my, my church back in, in Greenville, and bless her heart. She always wanted to, she wanted to prophesy every service. We even having this awesome worship service, and she'd start, you know, going with tongues and then interpretation. And you could have just been up there in the ceiling with a bucket of ice water. I mean, it just killed the whole thing. <laughs> See, you can you can say something out of your out of your head, and it not be the Holy Spirit. I believe in tongues and interpretation of tongues. I believe in prophecy. I believe they're biblical. They operate in the church. And, I, and I've seen, operated in, and been part of, and been under other ministries that did do that. And it was God. And I've been there when it won't nothing but the flesh. It was just made up. Like this one woman got up and says, you know, as I was with Abraham in the wilderness, and I spent 40 years with Abraham in the wilderness, and we, you know, fed them manna from heaven and quail from heaven. And I led the children of Israel over, and Abraham took them over into the promised land. I'll be with you. And she sat down. She sat there, man, everybody in the church is sitting there going. She stood back up and said, yay, the Lord hath made a mistake. It was my servant Moses. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. Help us. Help us. And then they wonder why people think we're crazy. They call us crazy Maddox instead of charismatics. <laughs> that kind of stuff don't help. All right? Receive the word. When it's the word of God, receive it. Take the parts you don't enjoy. Keeps you balanced. Not compromise. We always want to say, if, you know, if we've got to find a scripture that kind of goes against our narrative, that's compromise. That's not compromise. If it's the Bible, it's not compromise. Come on now, let's be real. That's going to hurt. Uh, that's going to hurt my faith. The Bible produces faith. How is it going to hurt your faith if it's the Bible? Now, I'm obviously, taking the proper context. I told somebody the other day. You know, we we can create all kinds of narratives. We can make all. You know, Bible says Judas uh, went out and hung himself. It also says, "Go and do thou likewise." And then it says, "What thou doest, do quickly." So I can prove to you biblically, it's, it's biblical to commit suicide and do it right now by taking bits out of their context. Now, we want to stay in context, okay? We want to stay contextual with what we're doing. Um, but aside from getting out of that, that place of being contextual, um, we have to be faithful to hear the word and then receive it. In other words, it becomes a governing aspect of our life. And we, we receive it wholeheartedly in humility, because it's God's holy word. 
And we don't reject it because it's not what we want to hear. Amen? Thirdly, kind of ties in what I just said, you got to love the Word. There are parts that your flesh and your mind may go, eh, that's why you got to renew your mind. And you got to accept it as God's Word. Hello? And when you accept it as God's Word, you embrace it and love it. As much as you love the one, you know, um, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. We love that, don't we? Come on now. We love the blessing of the tither and the giver. We love to quote those scriptures. We love to embrace them. But I say to thee, love thy neighbor. Do good to them that despite them. We don't want to embrace that quite so quickly. Why? Because that puts some hurting on our flesh. <laughs> see, that prosperity thing, whoa! <laughs> I see it. I see, my, I see my Lamborghini. I see my extra house in the mountains and my extra house on the coast. I see, whoo, yeah, I can, I, prosperity! Call me king and my wife queen and our children prince and princess. Going we'll to start wearing princely robes around because we are... What about humility? You're going to hurt my faith. I ain't going to see that. It hurts my faith. I remember um, we had, a, had a, a person in our church back in the, um, our home church. Now, now, we, now, I grew up Pentecostal holiness. Got saved later. But I was, I was around all the, the moves of the Spirit, you know, and, and that things. Janie grew up heathen. I mean, she was just heathen. Uh, she had a lady that she, her, one of her elementary school teachers whatever, would come out on Sundays and take her to the Presbyterian church sometimes. But for all practical intense purposes, she grew up as a heathen. Then she got saved, born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost, came over among the Pentecostals. Hallelujah. Well, then we came over on, on, to the Word of Faith. Glory to God. Went to Ramah, graduated. Hallelujah. I was going to tell you something. Glory to God. I hate it when I, when I grab, have something get me to go there and I I lose it in the way to get in there. Huh? Humility. In our church. So then when, we, when I went to Raymond and came back, we didn't stay in the Pentecostal church. And, and here's and there's just some reasons. At that time, uh, I remember um, a directive had just come from that particular conference of our church denomination not to preach Copeland or Hagen in your, don't let anybody preach Copeland or Hagen in your churches. Now, Brother Hagen had been Assemblies of God most of his ministry. Until so they wouldn't let him go to other churches. And he told, his, he told his overseer, he said, the Lord told me to go to other churches beside the assemblies. He said, I have to obey God. He said, I sat. And he said, I hate that rule, but that's our rule, and I understand. And that's the only reason he left the assemblies, because they wouldn't let him go into a non-assembly church and preach. You had to preach only in assemblies. Now, they've changed that since. And, you know, they, they people, get, people grow and they get wiser. Okay? So it's not, that's not the same way anymore. And, uh, but we had to grow in our church. And somebody came in and taught on, now y'all have all, all read the passage of Scripture. It talks about um, if, you know, if your gift is giving, give liberally, you know, on this and that, you know. And they, they, they teach, they taught for, for a good season that those were called motivational gifts. Now, that's a, that's a stretch. I'm going to be honest with you. I've looked at it. I didn't see it then. I still don't see it. I just don't see it as what we call motivational gifts. I tried to teach it. It just didn't. I mean, it's like, it's like eating food that swells in your mouth. When I was trying to teach it, it just didn't, it just didn't go right, okay? I couldn't see that clear, with clarity that, there, that you could actually got motivational gifts. So anyway, that was being taught, and so, and on prophecy. And then they start talking about the personality types of these different gifts. Now, the prophecy-motivated person is black and white, they call it like it is, boom. And this person took it and ran with it. They were mean. They were harsh. Well, I can't help it. I'm prophecy motivated, and I just tell it like it is. Yeah, but there's another scripture that says, let, it, let the words be seasoned with grace. You don't get to be arrogant and a jerk because you're prophecy motivated when the Bible says that you're to season what you say with grace. It's to be tempered. 
even if you're telling it straight up and telling it like it is, it's got to be tempered. Hello? And make it palatable to the hearer instead of just shoving it down their throat. And, you know, I'm prophesying. It just gave them a right to be a jerk. Yeah. You just want to say, you're just, no, no, no. no. There's no gift called jerkism. You're a jerk. How's that for prophecy motivated? Hello. <laughs> yeah. Prophecy. Come on. I mean, Dr. Phil would have a field day with you. You're an idiot. And they were. Anyway. Okay. Where was it? Oh, we're supposed to be talking about love and the word. When you take, when you come to the word and you receive the word, you have to embrace the things that are harder just as much as you do the things you just love to hear about. I can tell you right now, you can go hold a prosperity seminar, a gifts of the spirit seminar, a you're under grace seminar, and you'll feel auditoriums, coliseums up. Come in and do a Christian character seminar and see what happens. Why don't we love the scriptures about our character as much as we do about what we can get? I heard a couple of grunts. That's a, that's a, that's a legitimate question. Why are we so in love with what we can get, but we reject or disdain what is necessary to be able to handle what we get? That maturity of character. To be with Paul. Now, a, 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 an alternate translation from Paul talks about, I know how to abound, I know how to do this. One translation says this, I know how, he said, in every situation in life, I've learned how to be abased and not lose my poise. I've learned how to abound and not lose my head. In all these things, I've learned to be self-sufficient. And then he says this, and I can do all things. No, no, he didn't say that. He says, um, oh gosh, it's, it's Weymouth. I'm trying to think of the 20th century New Testament. What, what does, how does the 20th, Seth, 20th century state it? <laughs> oh, and all these things. Here we go. 20th century New Testament. Out of print, I, I, but I got a copy. <laughs> Found, found, found one out there on the ether, out there on the ether world and got a cop, hard copy of it. Uh, it says, I have learned to be independent of the circumstances. That takes character. It takes character to not have enough and not lose your poise. It takes character to have more than you need and not lose your head. That's maturity. You've learned to be independent of the circumstances, which is why I said, <clears throat> we have got to stop just loving the things where we get from God, prosperity, health, healing, blessing, possessions, da 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 And it, almost to a point of disdaining the teaching from the Word of God about character and humility, the very foundations upon which our lives are built so we can handle all we get without misusing it, Without, without being bragatory over it, without using it to get a lot of money out of other people because I got, you know, it attracts. People are attracted to what they see as successful. But we have painted the wrong picture of success in our circles, the, the charismatic word of faith circles. We have painted the wrong picture of success because we've made it all about prosperity. And some bozo called Brother Hagen the father of the prosperity message. And I'm like, did you read the Midas Touch bozo? Did you read the stuff he, hear the stuff he had to say about watching out for the gold, the glory, and the girls? Where he brought balance to not getting out there into excess with stuff? He wasn't the father of the prosperity teaching. Not, not in the sense of what is being taught out there in a lot of places today. 
He, had, he tried to correct it, and they rejected him. One well-known preacher said, I think he's sick on senile. Well, I'm sorry. Who are you to make that statement about God's servant who's trying to keep balance in the body of Christ and keep it from getting into error? Just because you built your ministry and got all this money and you're flying around in your private jet and all this stuff, I get tired of that. Hello? I believe, listen, I believe there are times that, that, that ministries need the right travel tools. I'm not opposed to that. But please stop using it as a leverage to get people and, and suck, blood suck the, the church out of money. Okay? Why don't you come, why don't you come in and don't teach on money? And well, that's my ministry, to teach on money. Well, how about teaching the character they need to be able to handle the money? Well, they're not going to give them the offerings. Are you here? No, we have to love the whole Word of God. We have to be as excited about learning about what it takes to develop our character as a believer as we do about how I can get financially blessed and prosperous. And make as much ado about our confessions about developing my character as we do that all my needs are met and I live in overflow. Oh, that hurts. Ouch! I almost feel like James Brown. Ow! <laughs> but he ain't saying I feel good. <laughs> oh, that hurt! <laughs> Hello? Somebody say amen on me or, or help me, Jesus. Amen? We have to love the whole word. Psalm 119, verse, <laughs> what time is it, guys? Y'all done let me do it again. Would y'all stop it? It's your fault. Why is it my fault? Y'all fault. Y'all going, why is it my fault? Because you're pulling. When you make a demand on the Word of God, it just flows. I'm trying my best. I thought I was going to finish this whole thing tonight. I ain't going to finish this tonight. It's your fault. Okay. Psalm 119, verse 127. I was about to read 27, which is good, but it's not what I was looking for. <clears throat> Therefore, I love thy commandments above gold. Yea, above fine gold. Think of, the, think David saying, you know, I love that thou shalt not. Not just thou shalt. And you will have and you're realist and coming in and going out. He loves the, he loved the word of God. He loved his commandments more than gold. He didn't find, not just gold, not, not just 10 karat gold, 22 karat gold. Hello, you got to hear the word. You got to receive it. Then you must embrace and love it. Because every aspect of the word of God is life changing, is life building, is development in your life that produces sound, solid, strong faith. And I'm preaching better than you're saying amen out there. Go ahead and say amen to that one anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let me, let's, let me give this last point. We may be able to kind of wrap it up with, with this right here. Obey the word. If you're going to hear it, receive it, and love it, you got to do it or obey it. It's the same thing, same thing. James 1, verse 22. James chapter 1, verse 22. And we are, we're going to wrap up right here. We'll let you all go. Come on, guys. Get in. Get in. Yeah, here we go. Remember, we already talked about earlier in receiving the word to the lay outside our filthiness and superfluity of knowledge to receive the word, meekness, receive with meekness the engrafted word, able to save your souls. Verse 22 goes on now. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a, unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself <coughs> and goeth his way and forgetteth whatsoever man, what, what manner man he is. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, work, not word, work. This man should be blessed in his deed. 
See, the Word of God makes commandment for you to do certain things. You're to be a doer. So if we're going to keep the Word, we're going to be a hearer. We're going to receive it with meekness. We're going to embrace and love it. And then we're going to go out and do it. We're going to act on it. We're going to obey the word. Amen. Hello. So next time you're hearing a sermon that's not, I mean, you know, money cometh to me now in Jesus' name. And we're all shouting bye-bye chickens. You know, you know, you know the story. You know, you're in the, you're, you're actually you're an eagle, but you got left as an orphan in the chicken yard. One day you find out when you start flapping your wings, you want a chicken, you were, you were an eagle. You start flying out of there and you start going bye-bye chickens. You stop pecking on the ground. Hallelujah. You flew, and great sermon. Not, nothing, I can't contradict that sermon. But when they tell you that you got to put off the old man and put on the new, which was created in Christ, and godliness and true holiness and walk according to the precepts of God. We ought to be, yeah, I declare that I'm putting off the old man and putting on the new glory to God. You got to be just as excited about making that kind of confession as you do bye-bye chickens. Well, you don't sound like a word of faith preacher to me. Well, that's exactly what it is. You go read Paul's writings. A lot of people who quote Paul, the grace preacher, forget about the God forbid scriptures. <laughs> Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Hello? That was rhetorical, by the way. Paul was being sarcastic. Okay? I mean, Paul was a sarcastic individual. <laughs> I mean, he says some stuff. And I won't go into it tonight. He said some stuff like with dealing with circumcision stuff that when you read the, the literal what he said, um, whoo, you're like, oh, my. <laughs> he didn't pull any punches. But he was the grace preacher. He only, he, no, he didn't. He had a lot to say about stop being an idiot. He even used it in the J.B. Phillips translation. With Philippians, he says, you know, Oh, oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? I believe Philippians 1. Paul writes and says, Oh, ye dear idiots of Galatia, in the J.B. Phillips translation. I love that verse. One of my favorite J.B. Phillips verses. Okay? The New Testament modern speech by J.B. Phillips. Uh, <laughs> oh, ye dear idiots of Galatia. Why? Because they were seduced by Judaizers and trying to return to the law the Old Testament law of ordinances and so forth to get right righteousness. That's what, that's what he was against. He was, that's what he was against, trying to use it to obtain righteousness, not that Scripture's told you not to do certain things. Okay? All right. So we're going to stop here. So how, what are we going to do? We're going to hear the Word. Say it. Hear the Word. Two, receive the Word. Three, love the Word. And four, obey the Word. In Jesus' name, can you say amen? Praise the Lord. Everybody, thank you all for joining us tonight. We're getting ready to take up our offering, receive our offering. If you're watching and you want to give, um, they'll put a, uh, well, I can't put a slide up out there, can we? Yes. We can't? Okay. Be, uh, uh, Brother Dick's going to put it up there. Uh, you, if you use Cash App, it is dollar sign Expedition Triad, all lowercase letters. Dollar sign Expedition Triad, all lowercase letters. PayPal is give at expeditiontriad.org. Give at expeditiontriad.org. So cash app, um, dollar sign, expedition triad, PayPal, give at expeditiontriad.org. Okay? You can give that way if you want to give electronically to the church. Praise God. I want to thank all of y'all for joining us tonight. We bless you. All my high school buddies, if you're still out there, Linda and Ivy and um, Jackie, uh, thanks for joining. Uh, I hope you were ministered to. I hope it blessed you. Glory to God. And um, <laughs> And Jackie, you need to come over at least and visit sometime. If you live in Curtisville, <laughs> hallelujah. Last time I saw her, we had to go down to Aiden to a family cl class reunion to see her and, uh, and Matt. So you and Matt, come on over and visit one service. 
Just, just love to see. I know you're in the church, but come see us. All right. Uh, Ivy, Linda, y'all passing through the area? Stop in and see us. We'd love to see you. Okay. Um, glory to God. Y'all here? Ready to go? How many love Jesus? All right. Uh, if you need an offering envelope, they're on the seat backs in front of you. If you're giving with the other electronic means, go ahead and give. Hallelujah. And um, let's get ready. Glory to God. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless the people as they tithe, as they give. Thank you. Heaven's windows are open unto them, and you pour out blessings on them. In the mighty name of Jesus, and everybody agree with that by saying, Amen. Amen. Praise God. And that, now, remember this verse from 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Thank you for joining us tonight at the Expedition Church, where we're living the life or, of, of faith. Did I just misquote? Living a life of victory forged by faith. Did I just misquoted our own slogan. Living a life of victory forged by faith. God bless you. See you next time here at Expedition Church in uh, the Piedmont Triad area. Glory to God. Have a good night.